welcome back to the Camp Men Show. I'm your host, Father Stephen Logue, chaplain of Lancaster Catholic High School and host of the show. Welcome to those who are new. Welcome back to those who are returning. We're going to get right into it today because we have an awesome episode for you guys. First and foremost, we are going to introduce the long expected and long anticipated and much hoped for Associate Director of Campus Ministry, Miss Abby Kierskowski. And after introducing her, learning a little bit about her, we're going to talk about Our Lady of the Rosary, Our Lady of Fatima, uh, during this month of October, where we're focused on Our Lady and the Rosary. So, without further ado, welcome to the studio and welcome to the team, Miss Kay. Abby, Miss Kay, welcome to the studio uh, and welcome to the team. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. I'm gonna let you, first of all, I said your name before, but tell us, how do you say your last name? Kierzkowski. Kierzkowski. Yes, very Polish. Right, but we can just go with Miss <laughs> K. Miss K is okay. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. To start, to get to know you a little bit, um, what were you doing before you took this position? Before, I was actually working in a hospital. Uh, I wasn't cool and I wasn't a nurse or anything. A um, lot of respect for nurses, my mom's a nurse. I was an admin secretary, so I worked behind the scenes and I did like scheduling and a bunch of boring office work. Awesome. <laughs> so other than the uh, being fed up maybe with boring office work, <laughs> what made you make the switch to a position like this? Well, I love Jesus. <laughs> so being able to work and do Jesus things at the same time was really appealing to me and I love people. So I'm very excited to do people things and juicy things all at once. Awesome. Well, we are filming this on your third day of work. Yes. Um, so we haven't had too much time yet, but what's been your favorite thing of uh, those three days so far? Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> meeting students, meeting students and sharing the love of Jesus with students and worshiping with students. It's really awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so if you haven't met Miss Kay yet, come by Camp Min uh, yes, and meet her. Yes. Visit, please. <laughs> that's your favorite thing to do, apparently. Yes. Jesus and people. I also know you uh, didn't go to a Catholic high school, right? No, I did not. So uh, <laughs> I didn't either. I went to public school and it's, we've already talked, it's been a, it's a bit of a culture shock coming yes. to a Catholic school from going to a public <laughs> one. Um, what's been the most sort of surprising thing in the, in a school like this? The fact that you have Jesus in the building. <laughs> That's so cool. And you talk about it and it's not weird to talk about. It's normal. Yeah. Uh, definitely don't have that in public school. Yeah. Yeah. Very different. <laughs> so um, to get to know you a little bit more, um, let's just go through a couple of questions. What is your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? I don't watch much TV anymore, but The Chosen is pretty solid. So nice, we'll nice. Go with The Chosen. Favorite hobby or just favorite hobby? A hobby that you enjoy. Oh, I love to read. I'm not good about making time to read, but I like reading. Um, but I also like video gaming, so that's kind of oh, two. Nice. So what video games. game do you play? Um, I grew up on Sims. I played Sims before I could read, which is kind of weird because <laughs> that's important to playing Sims. <laughs> um, but I also like Valorant. So awesome. it's it's a FPS. Nice. 5v5. Nice. Very cool. If you play games, you'll know what I'm, what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think I've heard of that. Maybe I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> we'll talk but, about it. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Now, uh, a classic of the uh, hot seat here in the Cantman Show, classic question, what's your favorite ice cream? <sighs> okay, so ice cream, if it's like hard ice cream, if you know what I'm saying, mint chocolate chip. Turkey Hill specifically, because the chips aren't too big, they're like the perfect size. And then soft serve, chocolate vanilla twist. Wow, way. very precise. Yes, I like it. I'm very specific. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So to uh, pivot into the second part of our episode here, um, I'll ask, what is your favorite set of mysteries of the rosary? That is an easy question. I'm a sorrowful girly. Uh, you might not know that because I giggle all the time, but I love the sorrowful mysteries, Our Lady of Sorrows, all of it. Awesome. See, I, I think my favorite is probably the set of the Luminous Mysteries, oh, the so most cool. recent ones added, um, particularly because of the backstory behind them, how they were first sort of proposed by a former satanic priest who <laughs> converted and then had this great love of Mary and the Rosary and came up with these mysteries. So that's super cool. That's wild. I didn't know that. <laughs> it, it is. It is wild. Blessed Bartolo Longo um, is his him. name. He's on his way to uh, 
being a saint. But um, this month, we're focused on the rosary. We're focused on Our, our Lady of Fatima and the apparitions at Fatima. Um, so for those who don't know, a, a brief recap. So the miracle in Fatima, the apparitions in Fatima took place in 1917. Our Lady, for, well, for some angels, and then Our Lady appeared to three young children, young Portuguese children, like six, seven, eight, nine, somewhere in there. And uh, she started to reveal messages to them and encourage them in prayer and all of these, these good things. And when they first started to tell people about this, there was a lot of um, disbelief. And a lot of people who, uh, just in general, didn't want to believe in anything supernatural, didn't want to believe in God. And so the authorities quickly scooped up the kids under false pretenses, brought them to the police station, and uh, began threatening them. They said, basically, we're going to kill the youngest one, the youngest sibling, if you guys don't change your story, if you don't tell us the truth. Because the kids kept saying, no, we saw Mary, she told us this, she appeared to us, it was miraculous. Um, and they took the youngest one off, the other two thought that she had died. They're, they're little kids, they don't have any reason to believe that the authorities are lying to them. Um, but none of them changed their stories, none of them backed down on this. And, and so over time, the, the story started to spread, some people believed, some people didn't. Um, and Our Lady appeared to them on every 13th of the month, for a number of months in the year 1917, uh, leading up to October 13th in 1917. Uh, and that's when the famous miracle of the sun happened. At that point, tons of people came out to see, tons of people wanted to see whether or not it was true, people who believed, people who doubted. Um, but as they got out there, uh, it was a rainy day, everything was muddy and, and soaked, and um, there were puddles and people's clothes were wet, and, and they're out there waiting for this, this supposed miracle and, and to see Mary. Um, and as the kids are there praying, suddenly the sun starts to sort of spin in the sky, the, the sky changes colors, the sun then looks like it's falling towards the earth. Uh, everyone's panicking, falling to the ground and, and freaking out. Um, it would have been wild to see. Uh, and then finally the sun stops and then goes back up into the sky um, and goes back to where it was. And then as everyone looks around, um, you might be tempted to think, oh, everyone was just hallucinating or making it up. But as they looked around, the ground was dry. The ground that had been soaking wet and, and uh, you know, puddles everywhere, their clothes were wet, everything was bone dry. Um, newspaper, not secular newspapers reported this, every, you know, people had big conversion experiences here. Our Lady's main message of the, of the apparitions was, of course, pray, uh, and especially pray the rosary. Um, that's so important to, to pray. So. Maybe, Miss Kay, any tips on how to pray the rosary? Because sometimes it can be kind of boring. Um, yeah, there's honestly a lot of stuff out there. Uh, I got coloring books, I haven't used them yet, but I'm planning to, maybe um, during adoration or something. I'm very visual, so I also like looking at pictures that are um, representative of the mystery I'm on, so I can focus that way. Um, yeah. That's, I'm very visual. <laughs> that's a good insight um, to like know yourself. Yes. And so if you're a visual person, then okay, give me something visual that I can look at. Um, yes. If I'm a, a, an auditory person, maybe I can find a, a tape of someone praying the rosary and pray it with them to keep me focused, keep me going. For a long time, I couldn't pray the rosary in the car um, because I would like start to fall asleep. <laughs> And it would make me so tired. Um, <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore. So now I, I, if I need to, I can pray the rosary in the car. Um, <laughs> But yeah, finding what works for you and, and how to do this because the whole point is to give us that nice, comfortable, repetitive prayer that um, if our minds start to get distracted, helps to pull us back um, and focus on, on those mysteries of the rosary. So just to finish up here, um, we'll go back to welcoming Miss Kay here uh, and just ask maybe one last question. What are you looking forward to the most um, in this position? I am very much looking forward to meeting all of you uh, and getting to know you and where you are in your spiritual journey and how we can move that along and get you closer to Jesus. Me too. Help me. <laughs> awesome. And that, that's so important and that's something I think that um, we should never take for granted here, yes. that we really want to build a community where all of us together are helping each other grow closer to Jesus. Um, just as we want to help you guys, um, you help us grow closer to Jesus ourselves. Um, that's the point. It's not good for us to be alone. We're meant to be in a community. It's not just us and not just me and Jesus, um, but it's us together and a relationship with him. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the team. And uh, <laughs> until next time, God bless. <laughs> <laughs>